This is Mr. Smith, and here's how to record a screencast that not only records your voice, but will also record whatever would normally be playing through your computer's headset. And I say headset because you don't want to be using your computer's built-in speakers for this, ever. And we'll get into that in a little bit. Now, the first thing you're going to need, in addition, of course, to QuickTime Player to record your actual screencast, uh, I'm a big fan of free apps, so that's what we'll be using. Uh, you also need a program called Soundflower, which once you install it, it installs a folder in your apps folder called Soundflower. And now I've just lost it. There it is. And you open that folder up, and inside it is an app called SoundflowerBed.app. You double-click on that, and it doesn't open any windows. It just appears up here. It's this tiny little flower up here, and you click on that, and you can set this to built-in output. I recommend you do that, but put those headphones on first because things are going to get annoying really fast if you don't. Now, what Soundflower is, is it gives an additional option to anything that would input or output audio. So now if I go into my system preferences and click on sound, in addition to internal microphone for input, I also have Soundflower, two different Soundflower options. I've just picked two channel, that's all I need. It's basic, it works. Uh, you can play with 16 channel if you want. I'm just going with two channel. And for output, same thing. I set that to two channel. So all my inputs are going into Soundflower, all my outputs are coming out of Soundflower, and mixes them all together into a wonderful paste. Okay, maybe not a paste, but y you hopefully get the idea. Now, to get my voice into it, I'm actually using a bit of a workaround. I opened up GarageBand and I turned on monitoring. Now, monitor when you're dealing with audio, pretty much what that is, is whatever audio is getting picked up by the microphone, you hear back through your designated speakers, which can get a little annoying, but it works in that you know what your levels are, you know if there's any background noise, you know if perhaps the microphone is too close to your mouth and you're getting a lot of heavy breathing, etc., etc. So it's worthwhile to have it on. But if you turn monitor on, you will know instantly if you don't have your headphones plugged in because it will make that wonderful sound that you normally hear only when you take a microphone and you put it too close to a set of speakers, which I'm not going to put into this recording. So, yeah, it's that annoying. Now, I'm not actually recording anything in GarageBand. I'm just leaving it here with monitor turned on. That's how you're hearing my voice right now. Now, I did go into GarageBand, and I made sure... Let's go into my preferences here. Under audio and MIDI, I made sure my audio input was my built-in input. This is the only place where I set it to be my built-in input. Everything else is Soundflower, including audio output is Soundflower. So you're going to set everything to Soundflower, except in GarageBand, your input is going to be built-in input. Or if you happen to have a Snowball microphone, maybe you have it set for Snowball or Blue Ice or whatever microphone you are using to record your personal audio, that's what you're going to set this for. And you can use other programs. I'm just using GarageBand because it's already installed and it's free. All right. So next up, when I go into QuickTime, and now I'm using an audio recording here for this because I'm currently using the screen recording feature to record this whole tutorial. So pretend this says screen recording instead of audio recording. You'll get the same idea. It's the same control setup. It just so happens that right up here where it's a stop recording, I'm using the screen recording, and I can't record two screen recordings with QuickTime at the same time, unfortunately. Well, in any case, when I click on this little arrow here to set my microphone, you guessed it, I'm picking Soundflower again. And as you can see, even though this is saying Soundflower here, um, this is still acting like it's hearing my voice just fine. Well, that's because, in addition to everything else, I have also gone up and picked built-in output here, which just happens to be my headset. So I'm hearing everything, this is hearing everything, and if I go and play an audio file, which I have one that I prepared in advance, I'm just gonna open this up and maybe 
okay if I move this over here so you can see it better. Now, the only reason you can hear this music right now is because it's playing through Soundflower, which I selected as the input for this recording that's currently being made. So, there you go. Relatively short tutorial. It basically shows all the buttons you have to press in order to get a recording that plays what would normally be playing through your speakers, or records rather, what would normally be playing through your speakers, as well as whatever would be coming from your microphone and mixes all together into one recording. It's, I know, it's kind of haphazard and kind of ad hoc, but it works and it doesn't cost anything. So if you have any questions, feel free to ask.